All right, everybody, welcome to the Science of Golf Performance YouTube show, podcast extraordinaire, etc. I'm Bobby. To my right is. Sorry, I don't know, right? Oh, Chris. My name's Chris. And to my left is. Tyler. All right, today we're going to talk about a great piece of equipment, the slam ball. So, Chris and I both have one next to us. Sorry, you got left out, Tyler. All right, I was going to throw it, but you know you were ready. Fair enough. This is 20 on it. All right, well, we're going to talk about some great ways that you can. Work on your power, maybe at home, maybe at the gym, right? Anywhere that has a slam ball. We'll talk about the benefits of the slam ball. Um, and then we'll definitely talk about some exercises and point you to some resources that show you how to do the exercises um, so that you can get a good workout wherever you are as long as you got one of these guys. So uh, let's see, Chris, you want to talk about some good exercises for our vertical power production with the slam ball? Yeah, definitely. I think vertical is probably one of the most important and what we see in our research that the, you know, how much force you can put into the ground to drive vertically. So think vertical jump, if you looked at our home assessment and, um, you know, basically how high you can jump relative to how much you weigh, they're going to get how much power you can produce. And that is the absolute highest uh, correlation to club head speed. Number one. So this is a huge, this is why we're starting here, because that's this is the number one place that you want to really be looking at. And so I think the key with this is finding, so you know, I have a 20 pound ball, you've got a 10 pound ball, that's yep. about accurate for your strength. That sounds about right, no. yep. Oh. <laughs> I, wish the, I wish that was the case. Uh, but basically what we're looking at is you want to find a, a ball of weight that's heavy enough where it's challenging, but you don't want it so heavy that you can't move it fast. So I, I think that's, there's like a, there's a balance. If you have really, really heavy and you can't move it, power basically is like that sweet spot of how fast can you move it and how much force are you producing? So it's, think of it as like, you know, a hundred times zero is zero. So if it's too, so heavy, you can't move it, there's no power produced. So you got to kind of find that happy medium of where that uh, ideal load is for you to produce maximal power. So with a simple vertical slam, like just going up overhead, slamming it down. I think we'll probably, we're going to demo these in our, in our mini, mini series yep. on, in terms of how to do these types of exercises. Um, so consider this the why <laughs> episode of why we're going to do everything we're going to do in the mini series. Definitely check it out in the mini series of, of like how to actually execute these. So I'd say the number one would just be a vertical overhead slam. Uh, really kind of driving, as we'll, we'll show in the mini series, mm -hmm. through the ground to create that vertical thrust uh, with that slam. Yep. I also really love the caveman throw. So I have a lot of folks that I say get a slam ball, right? If you've got some space in your yard, right? We have really tall ceilings here, so we can do this exercise in house. But if you've got some space in your yard, right, a caveman toss is fantastic, right? So it's going to look like some of Tyler's favorite lifts, the Olympic lifts, right? But it's not going to require so much technique that someone like myself or Chris can't do it appropriately, right? But we're going to work on <laughs> we're going to work on triple extension, right? We're going to work on getting hips, ankles, knees all the way through and firing that ball up as high as we can. So again, going back to the sweet spot, right? If I use the 20 pound ball and the poor ball barely gets over my head, right? That's not good. But if I use a 10 pound ball and it's taking five or six seconds to come back down, maybe that was a little too light. So you might want to play with a couple different weights to see what gets you that sweet spot where it's challenging, but you, you know, got a lot of speed going through the ball. Right. I think a really good point with that. Oh, oh, I did not think you were going to throw that. <laughs> Pass the ball. Okay. All right, your turn. I'll keep this. <laughs> um, I think a really good point with that is yes, you want to find the sweet spot as far as speed and how heavy or, or how much of an overload you're using, but you also want to monitor the volume that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, on a previous exer or on a previous episode that we talked about, we talked about doing like nonsense just as fillers for your home workouts. Um, that would be a case here is if you picked up a slam ball and you did like 30 overhead slams consecutively, <laughs> like. What? How exactly? What are we doing to benefit on the golf game side of things? There, I think with that you're thinking about power production, so you're thinking about low volume, mm -hmm. and you're also thinking about with max intent. So if you're performing an exercise with a 10 pound slam ball like Bobby, and you get to the fifth or sixth rep, and you start to feel that drop off, like the speed starting to drop off, then at that point, then you're no longer training power. You're right. switching over to that muscular endurance. So being able to know when volume is enough, and then mm -hmm. also being able to know how much time to allow yourself to recover because it depends on what energy system obviously that you're training and i don't want to turn this into a big physiology lecture here but what um, if i do um that's because you're no a nerd. that's no because one. you're a nerd okay? no your spreadsheet will tell you everything that's fine <laughs> um anyway so it, it all depends on what energy system 
you're, you're training or you're developing, and, and here we're, we're working on your short burst, hey, the energy system that allows you up to 10 seconds of work, and then after that, you're mm-hmm. switching over, and that's after 10 seconds or after five reps, whatever it be, you're no longer training exactly the specific target. Yeah. Like a legit at least a minute to rest <laughs> to, oh, yeah. to be able to get that back. I, but I, I do want to bring up one of the benefits of the slam balls, mm-hmm. particularly if you're doing these at home, uh, like with any sort of slam, is it it's not going to concuss you in the face and yeah. break your nose, oh, uh, which you'll see. I know some people use like basketballs or like those just a regular rubber med ball, <laughs> and that'll like. Yeah. I, I, we've got some funny videos of people getting themselves in the face with those. <laughs> um, so definitely some benefits on the slams. I, I will say the other than the benefit, like caveman throw, assuming it doesn't, you know, you don't let it land on your head. Yeah, uh, it no. does. It sits, so it stops. You don't have to go chase it, which is mm-hmm. the case I think with some of the other other med balls. So there are some efficiency. Uh, elements that definitely are helpful with the slam balls as well. And yeah, they're extremely durable. So these are they're, they're built to last, and they're built to be used in type of situations or, or type of environments like this. If you think about your typical Dynamax ball, that's the really soft ball, and that's um, those only last for so long. They're not necessarily mm-hmm. built to be thrown overhead as often as these are. Not necessarily built to be thrown around outside, and yes, they are very expensive. Whereas these are extremely durable. Like they're they're built to be thrown around outside. They're built to to go through the, as much wear and tear as what we're talking about putting them through. I was about to say, I think this one has been around since like 2015. So uh, yeah, it's done a good job of, of staying sturdy, staying about 20 pounds, all that good stuff. Sure. So um, what about some like horizontal exercises, Tyler? Do you have anything with the slam ball that you give to so folks? The, obviously with the horizontal component, you have to have something that you should probably be throwing at. And so here we're lucky enough to have a brick wall, right? us and that's typically what we throw our met our horizontal throws at so if you have something at home that's similar to that but i would not recommend throwing your your slam ball at a, at a drywall <laughs> probably your your <laughs> your your, your, your parents, spouse or significant other might be very upset i've had a couple of online clients say that they accidentally done that but, um <laughs> no so we're thinking about from there we're thinking about working side to side so we're thinking about that lateral power component mm-hmm. um, we do a lot of scoop toss, a lot of Ironman throws, and once again, Caleb can probably um, bump in a link right here to show you a demonstrational video of what that's going to look like. Um, and what we're really focusing on there is sequencing. So we talk about vertical power. You're still using some of your vertical components, but you're you're training that ball to go from left to right, or you're also training that horizontal component as well, which you're creating that ground force and transferring it from from left to right or right to left. Yeah. Well, I think there's definitely, I think there's also like a transverse slam. I think there's obviously there's torsional or rotational mm-hmm. elements to that. Right. Um, but, you know, if we're doing a hop back variation where we want to, there's still an opportunity to, for, you know, focus on kinetically the horizontal drives that are there. It's not mm-hmm. so, and none of these really are solely horizontal or solely vertical necess- right. necessarily. Well, I guess caveman throw is pretty solely. <laughs> Close. Uh, <laughs> But you know, any of the, anything with rotation you know, or any uh, throws, there's going to be an element of horizontal, torsional. All of those are going to kind of be involved. So, um, you know, again, it's always as with everything, intent is is the most important thing. What is your intent of that exercise? What's your focus of that? And um, but like the throws are definitely like probably the easiest to do the horizontals. Um, but if you do all you have is a slam ball and all you have is drywall, don't ruin your marriage or get grounded. Like. like Go ahead with a with a transverse slam, and that's you know, and then that's that's a good option that to kind of um, you know fulfill that need of of training some of that horizontal force generation. Well, and I've been in the slam ball too, and I've had plenty of people give me this feedback when I've recommended, hey, if you've again got some space in the yard or even on a you know driveway or something like that, and it's pretty clear there's nothing to smash into. The nice thing about this slam ball is it might only roll you know a couple of feet, whereas if you know, you have a classic rubber medicine ball. I mean, that thing's going to keep rolling for chasing miles. The street, you're right. going to get more tired <laughs> chasing it, right? Whereas a slam ball, it might roll a little bit, but it'll eventually stop since it's a little squishy and, and won't. Yeah. Exactly. So you can, you know, absolutely, if you don't have, you know, a brick wall or, um, you know, anything like that, you can still do it maybe out in the yard um, and it'll roll a little bit, but, you know, not chasing for miles and miles. Sure. So, um you know, anything else that we want to talk about? So training thoughts. Yeah, Tyler, you already talked about, hey, make sure your rest breaks are good. Don't do, you know, 200 reps again until you're puking over the edge of your, you know, porch, something like that, right? Work those energy systems. And then, Chris, you talked about intent. Anything else we want to talk about 
how to maximize these uh, wonderful pieces of equipment. No, I think just the entire, like, go as hard as you can with your, and they're also great if you're frustrated just after a long day at work, like, go home and just, just throw it as hard as you can into the ground. If you got to deal with this guy all day, <laughs> it helps. It goes both ways. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, it does. Um, but no, I think, I think you guys, we've covered it pretty well, I think. Cool. So, uh, you know, like we've mentioned in other videos, right, that Par for Success exercise library is constantly getting updated. We've got plenty of great exercises with the slam ball on there, right? We'll probably throw in some links in there. We've also got some demonstrations in our live stream classes with the slam ball. Uh, Coach Jordan lets out a good primal scream when he slams it, right? Gets everybody pumped up. Um, you know, and then we've also got a bunch of resources on our website. If you want to get in contact with us, set up a strategy call um, to learn about how we can help you with some of our custom programs, things like that. Um, we've got all those resources available to you. So hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. You got something good out of it. And, and definitely uh, make sure you check out the mini series on this one. So that's sure. going to be super helpful to kind of understand, you know, how to let out that primal exactly. you know, <laughs> in the right ways. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, feel free to like this, uh, share it with your friends who might be interested as well. And then thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.